Hello and welcome to the Financial Services Expo. My name's Andrew Montlake and I'm delighted to be joined by Kate Faulkner. Thank you very much. Who is the MD of Property Checklists. .co.uk. That's the one. Very good site, very useful. Um, so Kate, I want to talk to you about, well, the buy-to-let market really, yeah, first that, of all. That's handy. <laughs> that, <yeah. laughs> that's what I know. I feel you know a lot about the buy-to-let market. <laughs> So uh, um, we've seen all the tax changes now. How, how have you seen the market evolve from there? Is it still a positive place to be? It, it de partly depends on where you are geographically. Right. So if you're kind of south of Watford, 3% um, extra stamp duty is thousands, if not tens of thousands. Yeah. Um, if you come from where I, I'm from, it's not very much because we still sell quite a lot of properties below the zero rate of stamp duty, so you're paying a few grand, if that, um, extra. Um, and of course, we also have better yields, so it, a lot of it, what I'm hearing is, down south, a bit of a slowdown, and London, but I think that was predicted anyway. Um, whereas actually what we're finding in Midlands and further north is that um, we're, we're attracting those that invested in the south who've realised now yeah. that they might need to spend a little less, which is fine, but people have to bear in mind that you're not going to necessarily see the capital growth that you've seen in the past because we just don't have the same level uh, typically. Yeah, and you haven't seen the same level of price rises that we have in, in London, although it's slowing, it's still, still growing though. No, I mean we've seen pretty much double digit rises across all of every single one of the 32 London boroughs has been going up 20-30%. Um, some haven't quite made the 20 and what's quite interesting is that um, after the last recession, so back in 2000, when we saw a similar surge, those rates of increases haven't been the same. So I think that capital growth is slowing and we're not seeing, so we saw 2000, we saw 30-40% growth um, in house prices in London. Then in 2003, we saw 20-30%. to 30 percent what we're seeing now is 15 to 30% growth year on year for the London boroughs and for some of the ones outside. But really when it comes to the Midlands upwards, we're not quite seeing five, 6% at the moment and we're not seeing that huge uplift and it might not come. So different capital growth environment. Okay, so buy to let generally for landlords. Do you think, do you get a sense it's becoming more difficult for landlords in terms of, so a lot of landlords obviously go out there and they, they self-manage the properties. Yes. Is that something you'd still advise them to do? Um, I wouldn't, to be honest. I think if you're an experienced landlord, if this is going to be your day job, if you are going to be a, what I call a serious member of something like the Residential Landlord Association, absolutely have a team around you great mortgage broker because that's essential you know it's not just the self-management people used to pick their own mortgage well you're not going to get access to mortgages unless you go to a broker now as a buy-to-let investor so you've got to do that you can't just sit and think that normal conveyancing is going to work for you because you've got to start putting properties in trust you've got to go out and get tax advice because if you're not getting that at the moment, well, you're going to get hit really hard over the coming years. And you might even not know what the tax implications are going to have on you personally. So the problem landlords have got moving forward is if you're an experienced landlord and you've been doing this for 15 to 20 years, probably you've got to learn a few more things, just things like right to rent, checking your tenants are here legally, for example, so you don't end up with a huge fine. Um, but if you're new to buying to let to start off with and letting property, my strong recommendation is use a Arla Nows or Ricks agent because they have this little thing called client money protection. Right, okay. And what that means is if somebody runs off with your money or they go bust, your rent's safe. It's little things like that. Yeah. And I, I kind of can't still believe that lenders, not all lenders, insist on new landlords doing that. Um, and I, you know, yes, join a land, if you're determined to do it yourself, yes, must join at least um, a landlord association, which might be a local one run by the local authority or somebody like the RLA. But the pro biggest problem for landlords is, I think RLA says 145 plus rules and regulations, and ARLA came out with 160. 
Now your average landlord is over the age of 55, um, so should be, you know, kind of enjoying yourself now um, on cruises, whatever it might be, um, and uh, you know, racing around, racing around in cars. I don't, don't care what it is, but you should be enjoying yourself. Um, and they probably still have a full-time job though. And I can't keep up with all the regulations myself. I have to work with different teams and different experts to do it. So I don't really know and don't believe, and I'm not being disrespectful to people, if I can't do it, I don't think it's possible for others because this is my day job. So how's somebody who's got a real day job going to be able to keep up? Because you can't just know all the rules and regulations, you've got to know when they're changed and how to implement them when things go wrong. And that's complicated. Yeah, it's a bit of a minefield. And we've, we've, all, we've also seen um, the rise of Airbnb. We so that, that's, <laughs> that's yeah. uh, quite a big thing. We're starting to get more calls in about oh, yeah, uh, people buying property. I want to Airbnb it. I think that's uh, the way that things wow. are going. That is, is there, are, there, are there dangers there, do you think? There are big dangers. Um, Airbnb will tell you it's all fine and there's no problem. Um, but there is sort of top down for the private rented sector and for tenants I think it's possibly one of the biggest threats for areas like London but also somewhere like Edinburgh. The reason Edinburgh can get hit, massive tourism, not necessarily as big a population. Yeah. So if you've got a ton of people shifting over, be it landlords um, or homeowners to Airbnb, you've got the loss of the hotel um, turnover. But more importantly, it potentially takes properties out of the long-term rental market, which we're short of anyway. Yeah, yeah. So in places like, I think places like Edinburgh, Glasgow, they're the places, or Harrogate, they're going to get hit hardest. And interestingly, and I seriously think, I hope the government's going to look at this, um, but in Berlin, where we think is a perfectly fine rental market, they've stopped these sites from actually advertising whole properties you're only allowed to advertise part of your property for let, which is what they were supposed to be for in the first place. Um, so it's had big impact internationally. We often do stuff when the horse is bolted here, and I hope that's not the case. And if you are a landlord, the other big thing to check is, is your tenant renting out your rooms? <laughs> yeah. Or their own room? Because quite That's a lot of point, yeah. it is, and there's been a very good uh, report from uh, I think it's Tom Silcott from RLA about the issues um, with Airbnb and things to watch out for. Because it's not just that, but you'll know better than I. It's well, are you protect? Will you, is your lender happy? And are you insured? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. if your tenant is letting out to people, then that's a massive problem for you. What if it's not under right to rent? What if they're breaking all the laws? That's a big problem. So it is an issue. And it's, it's the fact that there's lots of these that are adding up now for landlords that makes it, I think, you've got to rethink self-management and rethink the overall buy-to-let investment as doing that to yourself. You need a broker. You need a legal specialist, a tax specialist. And I think you need somebody to really help on the day-to-day -day basis. And if you're retired, looking at retiring, pass it over to somebody. Yeah. And although people makes perfect sense. Exactly. You might complain about agents' fees, but do you know what? They're all tax deductible. So you pay that rate, but then it's that rate minus 20, 40, 45 percent. So when you look at it like that, it doesn't actually cost that much. Okay. Well, thank you for your time, Kate. Pleasure, as always. Pleasure to have you. And thank you all for watching. <laughs>